Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday, the old tax day that new one is the 15th of May, but it is April 15th, 2021. Welcome to all of you. Economy, comfort, and safety on the road. Those are the things I want to talk about today as I begin to ramp up and gradually increase my nomadic van travels here. And of course, my goal has been to be as self-contained and self-sustaining as possible on a road, thereby expo uh, avoiding a lot of the expensive travel while still staying, staying comfortable and staying safe, a very important topic. The first thing is economy. As my friend Cam O'Dave has highlighted on his channel, fuel prices are really starting to bite into the RV community, and it's going to, well, the laws of supply and demand and the free market, uh, invisible hands of a free economy are going to start pushing a lot of vehicles off the road that would generally be in nomad mode, and you're going to see storage, a lot more going to storage and things like that. That's going to open up a world of travel for those who can stay on the move and sustain travel with those prices. And remember, my van gets 25 to 32 miles to the gallon, which is outstanding for uh, travel. And I love that. So there'll be less competition for things on the road. I think I don't stay in RV parks, but you can imagine um, coming up that the demand will definitely be... Uh, curtailed in terms of uh, just what I call free spirit travel, just to go on a whim, burn up some fuel. That's going to be a limiting factor here. So I'm glad that I have the economy in the vehicle, and I'm glad I'm going to be able to save on hotels. That's a big part of uh, travel where I've had in the past, and I'm not saying I'm not going to stay in hotels, but uh, the less I can the better, I think once or twice a week is good, but you're going to save a lot of money an average of night in a hotel. So the uh, economics of the travel work out quite well. The second aspect is, of course, comfort. And I want to gradually improve my van so it's more, it has a higher livability factor to it meaning that I want to be able to comfortably edit uh, video. I need to have some type of desktop service. I need to have compact storage of items because I have a very small, small travel van, and I don't really care too much about looks. I care about functionality, and that's probably one aspect of my being. Is I like things to work right. I don't necessarily care if it's not the most attractive layout, but it has to be functional. And that includes the bed being more comfortable, and I'm really pleased with the way the uh, reducing the width of the bed and still maintaining good uh, bed width has worked out really well as my recent trip to Point Reyes Station uh, shows. But there are some things I want to do on the inside. I want to uh, come and do a video with you guys of how I'm going to outfit the uh, rig. When I initially bought it back in 2017, I bought a lot of stuff, pots, pan, all kinds of things, and that ended up being on overload. So I really need to force myself to have one plastic container that is going to have what I really, really need on the road to prepare meals and 12-volt uh, appliances and uh, things of that nature. It'll help the economics of the situation, too. So it's going to be interesting to see how that works out. Uh, comfort, comfort, comfort. Uh, before, as I mentioned, if it was a rainy day, try sitting up on a raised platform bed. You'd have to be hunched over. It's not good. You can't sit up. You can't edit uh, videos. It just becomes a lousy place to spend the day. You find yourself sitting in the driver's seat or the passenger seat and that's not that really doesn't define comfort in terms of how you want to uh, spend your day outfitting comfortably means everything you could have a 12 volt tv so you can watch youtube videos I and mean, there's a lot of different things that you can do in a very small place so comfort will tax my creativity and that's good uh, remember what Ernest Hemingway said, unlimited freedom, i.e. money, 
is the enemy of creativity, and it is very true, okay? Force yourself to make do and be smart, be ingenious, be creative with what you have. So going to continue uh, going for the comfort thing. The trips, um, I kind of think I have to adjust my timeline because I do want to get things fitted out a little more in the van. The travels will be beginning very soon. The last thing I want to talk about is safety on the road, and this is a big one. Especially as a solo traveler, a trans woman, yes, I'm in heightened risk on the road, as uh, females are, and then some males are too out there. It's a different world. If you're in a home, you're in a house, you have that barrier usually of property, an apartment, you're in a complex where you have grounds, and the uh, parts of intrusion or people coming on the property, there's, there's a natural bubble around your um, your home, your apartment. And that natural bubble is a nice uh, cushion between you and what I call the real world out there. You don't have that in a van. You don't have that in an RV if you're boondocking. You are right smack in the world with no buffer, no barrier between you. And things like uh, people that are tripped out on drugs, people that are out of their minds, and uh, uh, just, you know, it's a reality of life in 2021 that you may have to deal with something like that. So, yes, I always carry uh, pepper spray, and I certainly will have it on my person. But it's also going to be... Um, and this is where my van gives me a degree of safety because I can pee on basically any city street. I don't have to be in a, in an, a far away place that I don't have to worry about that, uh, you know, with a big RV that the cops might come and knock and nobody's going to care. For all intents and purposes, it just looks like a work van on a job, which means I can be in some of the nicer areas overnight. And that's a big consideration for safety. The other big thing is being respectful on the road. And this is an issue I've seen a few times in hanging around with people. You might mutter something under your breath. You might um, put a video up that kicks back on you in a, a certain location. Yeah, it happens. And I think the governing rule for that is you can avoid a lot of trouble in that way by being respectful to no matter who you meet uh, and trying to see the positive side of people and the positive side of communities and things like that. Yeah, sometimes some communities are a wreck. Some communities are beautiful. And a lot of times uh, I'm interested in how the rest of the town or city lives. I'm not necessarily interested in the fancy pants neighborhoods, but I do try to go in with a bit of respect. Does that mean I'm not shocked out of my mind once in a while? No, of course it happens. Okay, but the reality is you have to be respectful of people across all uh, strata of society, socioeconomic, uh, where they stand in the socioeconomic life. It's a very important aspect. And it, it, it helps you, I think, pass more smoothly if you're in that frame of mind, that you're going to gear yourself to try to find the positives where you can. And having that frame of mind is going to help a lot. Sometimes you go into some areas, and people aren't stupid. They know they don't live in the best places, but they don't want to feel like they're being um, disrespected. Uh, and I think that is really uh, critical. It's also good for your frame of mind, too, to adopt that mode of positivity. So there it is. Economy, comfort, and safety. The big three for me is I ramp up for my van travels. Your thumbs up are appreciated today, guys, and have a wonderful day.